I've got you on this wobbly table here, but we're going to try to get through. So um, I thought maybe since a lot of us are kind of quarantined and stuck at home and looking for stuff to do, um, I thought maybe I would do some art videos and see if you guys want to paint along or create along. Um, today I'm going to be doing some simple watercolor techniques. So if you feel like you want to be creative, but you have a block or something like that, you feel like I don't know what I want to do. This is a fun activity to try to get your creative juices flowing. And I'd like to do this if uh, I can't think of anything and it's just not coming to me, but I know I feel like painting. Um, so I'm going to switch the camera view down so that you can see what I'm doing and I'll be right back. Okay, I hope everybody can see everything. Hello, what's up? Um, I'm going to get some better lighting for these videos, but for now this is what we're working with. I've got natural light coming in the window here. Um, let's see. First thing I want to show you is supplies. So you're going to want to have some decent paper. Um, you can get really good quality watercolor paper. You can get mixed media paper. You can get kind of crappy watercolor paper. Just make sure it's something thick that can take a lot of water. So right now I'm working with Fabriano Artistico watercolor paper, 140 pounds. Um, what are you? Cold pressed. So it's got this texture to it. Hot pressed is a very smooth texture like this. This is a watercolor paper from a um, Etsy company. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is swatch cards. So if you're running low on creativity, but you want to do something, you can make swatch cards. So you have all of your watercolor paint and you want to see how it looks when it's dry then you can do these and then keep them with your kit so you know exactly what a color is gonna look like when you use it. So here's some of my, the swatches from my Paints in My Travel watercolor kit. And I'm gonna show you exactly how we do this. Some of the other supplies you're gonna need first off is obviously your paint. So um, you can have like these little watercolor kits like so, you can have Gosh, you can have loose watercolors. You can have a kit like I made myself with all my favorite ones. Um, this is a kit of handmade watercolors that my friend Christy got for me, and they're beautiful. Um, you can get even Crayola makes watercolor. So <laughs> you can find watercolor very, very easily at most stores, even the dollar store, you can get those cake watercolors um, and you can get watercolor in tubes like this at Art Supply. So there's that. Now, as far as brushes are concerned, you need at least one. A lot of kits will come with a brush. That one's stuck. A lot of kits will come with a brush. These are my favorite brushes here. Um, my very favorite brush right now is this Escoda brush. Um, it's a number eight round. Um, but there's, you can go down a whole rabbit hole with watercolor brushes. Just make sure you get one that you like. Um, and we're gonna, I'm gonna use that Escoda brush today. But it's a round brush and this works well with a round or square brush. You can also use a water brush. And you can find these in stores as well. I think the last time I was in Meijer, I saw a pack of three of these for 20 bucks, which isn't too bad, but they look like, so you fill the barrel here with water so you don't have to have glasses of water laying around. You can travel with this very easily and you basically squeeze this part of the barrel to bring water down to the brush. Um, so you can use that as well. As a matter of fact, maybe we'll just use this today. So I've got several water brushes here. Um, there's one that's a square. So you can see that square shape there. 
and I think the rest are round brushes yeah um, now I'm going to show you with a regular brush because you're more likely to have one of those laying around okay you're going to have your water here and here we'll use these handmade watercolors as our examples okay so here's our page we're going to lay some water into that color and make sure we grab plenty of color. Hope you can see what I'm doing there. And then you're going to paint a bit of a thick chunk like that. You're going to rinse out your brush, take a bit of the water out of it, and you're going to put that water right next to that color that you just painted and then you're going to ever so slightly touch that color just tap it a bit and you'll see it'll start running over to where that clear water was and what that's going to do when it dries is give you a swatch of the darkest value of that color to the lightest and it's also going to show you how well it travels in the water okay again we're going to grab our color make sure we have a nice brush load of color right next to that one not touching you're going to do the exact same thing you're going to put down the darkest value of that color you can get. I'm gonna rinse out your brush, put water right next to that, and touch it. And as you can see, it'll start to move over. Some of them will travel more quickly over to the water side, and some of them more slowly. But if you swatch like this, sorry, my table's so wobbly. If you swatch like this, Every color that you have, you know exactly when you go to use it, what it's going to look like when it dries. So that's the first thing you can do to just sort of get your creative creativity flowing. You'll, you'll be doing that and you'll come across a color and go, oh, I know what I can do with that color and go from there. Now the next, next uh, creative thing we can do is we can... Take a whole page and do a whole bunch of blending. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our wet brush and we're going to make a nice wet circle on our paper just like this and fill it in with water. So that's just only clean water. Okay. And then we're going to grab a color like this bright orange right here. And you can just drop some of that color in and that's going to spread out. And we're going to grab a second color. I'm going to grab this really pretty blue here. I'm going to drop that in as well. And just any pattern that you find appealing. Once you've done all that you want to do on that one, you can make another circle of clear water. And grab different colors like this blue right here. And I'm going to do this bright yellow. And they're going to intermingle and mix in any way that they want to because you put that water down to begin with. You see? Let's do another. And we're going to continue to do this 
throughout the whole page in any shape you want. You don't have to do circles if you don't want. You can do squares. You can do random shapes. It's totally up to you. Get a little bit more water here. And you can sweep through if you want. You don't have to do dots like that. And I'll do this like mustardy color here. A bit of black. That'll be interesting. Keep in mind your color wheel when you do this. Certain colors you're going to mix together and you're going to get a muddy color. And if that's what you're going for, cool. And if it's not, then make sure you learn your color wheel. I'm going to use this minty kind of color here. Use one of these handy colors. And I also have some metallics here that I want to use in this. Let's see. Metallic watercolors have a lot of micas in them. And that what what makes them look iridescent like that. I'm not too picky about my water being super clean for this type of practice, but I do have a clean uh, jar of water over here as well. I'm going to use some of this really red metallic here. And you can see they continue to spread as they dry. Maybe get some Okay, so basically you can fill a whole page like this and then we're gonna let it dry and I'll be back with you later for the rest of this practice. Okay, we're back. Our circles are dry now. And here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get some pens. Here's some examples. There's like the big flare pen works really well. A regular gel pen. This is a pen touch silver pen. And my favorite is the Uni Ball Signo White Gel Pen. So what we can do with these is go into our watercolors and doodle designs. So like on this one, I'm doing this sort of wave shape in here. And let's see, we can do that's like so that's with a regular gel pen. This is with a flare pen. On this one, I'm gonna do some uh, like flame sort of shapes. My son is gaming here, sorry for the noise. So there is some 
flame type shapes in this one. Basically, you're just filling in each of these with a doodle of some type. And if you want to learn more about doodling, you can check out like Google Zentangle or let me think. There's plenty of like doodling pages and stuff like that. You can get like and you can get apps, things like that to do that. So this is the Signal White gel pen. Um, this is the broad. They have like I think three different sizes um, of the nibs for the pens. This is the broad because I think it lays down ink the best. And I'm gonna do some little circles in this yellow and black one here. So hopefully you get the idea. I'm going to use this white one in here as well. So I'm going to literally just straight lines in a diagonal all the way across this one. And you can fill in, sorry about the table moving, you can fill in as little or as much as you want. But I think you get the idea. And now um, with the metallic pen, I'll show you what we can do with that. I'll use that on this purple and blue one here. I will do a spiral. I will get a more sturdy place to film tomorrow, I promise. Anyway, so you can doodle in all of these and then you've come up with artwork that you didn't even know you could do. <laughs> so these are good for using to make um, cards. You can like cut this up and make a card out of it. You can use this as backgrounds for something. Um, you can do just about anything with it. You can fill these in with other colors, you can do whatever you want, but that's just a good practice for overcoming a creative block or to get started on something, and also to see how colors work together, to learn how um, colors work together and get to know your watercolors. So thank you for joining me today, and I'll come up with a whole different lesson tomorrow. Bye.